In this episode I make new lazy lines before getting my new lazy bag and of course get the sails back on. Also invite my friend Terje and his dog Basse to sail with me. We are sailing to Fort de France for lots of fun and to be ready for the carnival next week. I'm also sharing some basic sailing strategies and reasons for why sailing like we did before meeting up with all our friends again at the new anchorage. <laughs> You know it's soon carnival time as the cars with modified tailpipes is backfiring with load explosions every night. This has been going on for quite a time already. And even outside the grocery stores you can see Martinique is getting ready for the carnival in just a week. So being out here at Anchor feels pretty nice and quiet after the splash party I shared with you in the previous episode. I'm waiting for my friend Tarje and his dog Basse to help me aloft hanging up my new lazy lines when I'm done making them. Hopefully before the sailmaker arrives with my new lazy bag and sails. So I have these uh, old um, lazy lines that's uh, time to replace um, as I got a new lazy bag. So I got this from Carib uh, Marine today. So it's a uh, special design for being a uh, rope for lazy lines. So I think that's gonna be good. So I have to, so I have to make uh, all the right length and attach all these hooks and these small things. So it's, it's quite, quite a job, but luckily I have Tadja here to help me as well. So. The lazy bag is where you drop down your sail if you don't have a furling mainsail. And the lazy lines is guides that helps your sail falling nicely into this bag. I needed 80 meters of lines and 8 hooks for attaching it to the loops supported by the battens on each side. I also need 8 casters from under the first spreader and down this spider web making it adjustable. A total cost of 3261 euros including service and some adjustments on my sails as well. And just before my sail and lazy bag arrives, I'm almost done with my new lazy lines, hoping I got it right. It's not permanent stitched together yet, as I wanted to test fly it first to make sure all the lengths and the design is correct. So far it looks really good, and thanks to Tarje, I do not only have someone to film this, but also help to get it up my mast, threading the lines through the casters under the spreaders as well. And just as we are done, the sailmaker arrives with my new lazy bag and my sails as well. So after hoisting this on board with the halyards, we are ready to get the lazy bag mounted first, before preparing the mainsail with battens and travelers. The Genoa is very fast and easy to hoist and furl in, but the mainsail is a different story. Being in the tropics, it's key to look around you before hoisting the sails. And of course, this time of year, it rains a lot here in Martinique. Even though it's mostly only for a short amount of time, it can be pretty gusty as well. Late last night we were done with the sails and could set sails early this morning towards Fort de France. Catching up with our friends Aurora that started a few minutes earlier than us. We plan to sail together with a few other boats as well. Such a beautiful day being out sailing and even Basse seemed to enjoy the sail even though it's on a different boat from what it's used to. <laughs> the sailing dog. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay, Basse? Aurora do have an advantage of not having their mainsail making shades for the Genoa in these light winds. And on a B3 it's starting to be almost two light winds for sailing flat downwind. Ah, yeah, how this is! 
resulting not only in a bit rolling boat but also flopping sails as it's a bit current and some waves that don't really show on this video. We plan to sail the shortest route and to go on the inside of the diamond rock to enjoy its scenery. But I hate this kind of sailing and suggested to change strategy. It's not always the shortest route is the fastest and definitely not the most comfortable in these conditions. So much wind. Oh. We know it's gonna be more wind further up and also when we come to the point before the bay outside Fort de France. So a nice trick to avoid this rolling sailing is to jibe and get better angle at the wind. This way I sail much faster and much more comfortable. And Tadeo was comparing this with driving a supercar towing a trailer at the same time. Already sailing almost 3 times faster, peaking at 12.5 knots. Super fun to show Tadeo how fast B3 actually sails, if not only the conditions is right, but also using strategy and basic sailing tactics. And as we are flying towards Fort de France, we even discussed how perfect condition it is for even filling out the cold zero. I believe we would easily see in 16 knots today, however sailing close to the island, pointing towards Fort de France, this is not a good idea. Often you will experience some wind gusts coming around the corner, as the wind very often accelerates in this bay. It even looks like Basse found this perfect spot and enjoying this sail just as much as we do. What do you think? Like a train? <laughs> Nej, det er ikke så sødt, for det er
And just as expected, we got really nice win after running the point heading towards Fort de France. And a few hours later, Kylie shoves up as well. So now we are all gathered here, ready for the carnival. Nice, it's really nice to be back here in Fort de France, the capital of Martinique. The only downside is the fact this anchorage is among the worst places to be because of the bus drivers operating the ferries around here. So thank you so much for watching and also for subscribing. Uh, next episode will be uh, from the carnival here in Port de France. I can't wait to share it with you. It's going to be an extended um, uh, carnival special. So I guess it's not much more to say. Then um, all the best. Stay safe. Cheers.